Happy holidays, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Arnie's, or maybe I should say, welcome to the party, pal. I'm Austin Terry, and I'm joined by my best pals, Matt Johnson and Keith Baker. Matt, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. I've been waiting for this bracket for what seems like forever. So we're finally doing it. We've watched all these movies, and we're going to definitively declare what is the best holiday movie, and I am looking forward to it. Keith, let's get you in here as well. What are your thoughts? Are you excited as I am? Where are you at? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm very excited. There's definitely some movies in here. I think they're going to be uh, some tough draws. I'm anxious to see what you guys thought about some movies that I know y'all hadn't seen before. Some of them I like, some of them I don't like. We'll see. We'll see. We're going to get into it soon, but first, we did just wrap up a bonus series. Guys, you want to tell the audience about it? Yeah, so we just wrapped up The Mandalorian Season 2. Pretty sad, to be honest. I'm, I, you know, I was really enjoying reviewing those episodes. Matthew, I mean, tell them what we were and what we were doing. Yeah, like Keith said, if you are just as sad as we were that The Mandalorian just finished up, no worries. You can go to your podcast feed, wherever you get your podcast, of course, because you can check out all of our episodes where we broke down each and every show this season. Something we also did with The Boys Season 2 way back, and something we are planning to do in just a few weeks when WandaVision comes out mid-January. We're going to be the Wanda's talk in the vision. Who knows what other shows are going to come up with, because we're going to be the talking, blank in the talking. I don't know. That's how we title our shows. It's creative, and we love it. All right. Well, on today's show... It's time for the final bracket of 2020, and it's a big one. We've all spent the entire month watching just a bunch of holiday movies, and we are all now so full, just brimming to the top of holiday spirit that we've been invited to work in Santa's workshop as honorary elves. But before we head off to the North Pole, we figured it's time to answer the age-old question, what is the best holiday movie? Matt? Give us some thoughts so we can get into it. Yeah, there's lots on here. There was a few I hadn't seen before, and there was just a handful. Um, And the rest I've probably seen several times throughout the years. So some of these I'm super nostalgic for. Some of these are, like I said, I was never like that big of a fan of. So I got to rewatch them again for the first time in years. And then, like I said, you know, there were some I hadn't seen. So I got to experience them for the very first time. So it's going to be interesting kind of trying to balance feelings of nostalgia with something you just saw, whether you liked it or not. So I think it's going to be good. I think we structured the bracket and kind of paired things together that made sense. Nothing's at a disadvantage in terms of the pairing. I think it's pretty fair from what we kind of put together here. I think there are certainly at least over half of these films that I could see winning today. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and just kind of establish a little bit of criteria for a movie to move on. Keith, is there anything that stands out to you as something that should be like a qualifying factor here. We we called it the holiday movies. We didn't call it the Christmas movie. So I was I was gonna say does it have to do with Christmas? But I mean, technically, we're calling this the holiday brackets. So maybe it doesn't always have to do with Christmas. Maybe it just has to do with the winter time and the Christmas December era, mm-hmm. uh, and gives you gives you that holiday feel. Yeah, I don't really care about that aspect. I mean, it can be funny, serious, whatever. I think we have a, a decent spread on this list today. I guess one thing for me because. Like we've talked about in the, and the, I guess particularly the Halloween bracket we did a couple months ago, I one of my criteria was, can you watch this basically in the month of October in the lead up to Halloween? Is it better if you watch it then as opposed to some other time in the year? And I only watch like holiday movies during December. So for me, I guess a little criteria I would have is, is the movie made better watching it around this time, or does it kind of just feel like you could watch it anytime? I think for me, the the one thing I have that sticks out to me is I think where applicable, there needs to be a solid character arc, because I think that is a common theme around quite a bit of holiday movies. So I think there needs to be a good character arc where the, the main character ends at a different place than where they started at the beginning of the movie. I think, yeah, I think criteria is probably a bit light this time around, kind of self-explanatory, you know, is it? I think all all these take place during the holidays. They all have some kind of upbeatness to them. And, you know, even though I laid out my criteria, you think you can probably get extra enjoyment watching them in the days leading up to Christmas and the holidays. So I think we're pretty set. So I think it's just going to come down, honestly, to what we prefer, what we enjoy better. And that's kind of where I think we get our most interesting conversations out of these bracket episodes when it's just kind of about personal preference and things we like all right well let's roll that segue music and when we come back we'll have the wild card round (music) 
All right, Keith, let's jump in here and inform everybody who the one-seaters are today. Yeah, the one-seaters for today are Die Hard, directed by John McTiernan, starring Bruce Willis as John McClane and Alan Rickman as Hans Gruber. We also have The Santa Claus, directed by John Pasquin, starring Tim Allen and Judge Reinhold. We also have Christmas Vacation, directed by Jeremiah Chechik, starring Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo as Clark and Ellen Griswold. And last but not least, we have The Famous Elf, directed by Mr. John Favreau, starring Will Ferrell, James Caan, and Zoe Deschanel. All right, so Keith just told you who the one-seaters are. Everybody that wins in this first wildcard round will go on to face one of those films. And our first matchup of the day is The Nightmare Before Christmas versus Klaus. The Nightmare Before Christmas was directed by Henry Salick, and it stars Chris Sarandon and Danny Elfman as singing and voicing Jack Skeleton, and also Catherine O'Hara as Sally. And then we have Klaus, which is directed by Sergio Pablos and Carlos Martinez Lopez. And it stars Jason Schwartzman, J.K. Simmons, and Rashida Jones. So we just recently talked about Nightmare Before Christmas on the where we reviewed that holiday movies that made us. So we kind of got a behind the scenes look at the making of Nightmare and um, maybe I think probably gave us all some degree of newfound appreciation. So, yeah, uh, it's kind of interesting one. I know I think we might all be in the same boat. I know Austin just recently watched Nightmare for the first time, but I know all three of us just watched Klaus for the first time. And that's one of the newer movies on this list, if not the newest. So, yeah, kind of an interesting pairing. A movie we've already talked about on the show versus one that I don't even know if we know everybody's thoughts for on Klaus. So where do you guys want to start with this one? I'll start with a question. Is The Nightmare Before Christmas a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? Mm. Mm. That's a good question. To me, it feels like neither. I don't know. It's a good it's a good mix, but at the same time, it doesn't really feel Halloween-ish or Christmassy to me. I just kinda it just kind of felt like a well, they did a good job. It made it they made it feel like a Tim Burton film, which is what it what it is, uh, in a way. I guess I kind of disagree with you a little bit there, Keith. I would I would argue that the Nightmare Before Christmas is a Christmas movie, mainly because he is does end up having to save Christmas and he and he spends a lot of his time kind of trying to turn Halloween town into a Christmas town. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I just obviously a lot of the plot has to do with Christmas, but it just feels like if you watch it at Christmas, then because like if you watch it on Halloween, you can have all the Halloween appreciation and then look forward to Christmas in a couple months. Whereas if you watch it on Christmas, I feel like all the Halloween stuff was almost jarring. But I've never watched it on Christmas. I've only ever watched it on Halloween, so I'm not sure. Um, but I mean, yeah, there's certainly a lot of Christmas in there. I mean, Jack Skellington, you know, fails at what he's doing and then Santa has to kind of take it over, so... I mean, I could go either way. I certainly think out of all the ones on the list, it's not... There's only two movies on our entire bracket today, I think, that are not clear cut when it terms when in terms of are they Christmas movies like fully? And this is one of them. So, yeah, I guess I would take that into account. But I mean, it's it sounds like you guys feel strongly. So, Keith, if you want to jump out there, did you want to just throw out your vote? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and vote for Klaus. I really enjoyed Klaus a lot. I thought the story was awesome. The voice acting by J.K. Simmons, Rosita Jones and uh, Jason Schwartzman was phenomenal. Um, I, the story kept me entertained the entire time. I think it's a good family movie. I mean, it it could be. I, I think, and it applied to me as well, being you know a younger adult. I think I would have liked this as a kid as well, but I also enjoyed it mm-hmm. at this age too. So, and it just felt more Christmasy to me, and it had a really cool origin story of how uh, this kind of different Santa Claus came to be, which I really liked. Nightmare Before Christmas. Just I just kind of got bored with it on the rewatch. The songs kind of sound very similar to each other. Um. And I'm, I guess I'm not just much of a, I'm not too much of a musical guy, and it just didn't really pull me in as far as a holiday movie goes. So I'm going with Klaus. Yeah, I I almost hate to do it because I like Matt said this was my first time ever seeing The Nightmare Before Christmas, and I I really was blown away by it. I I really enjoyed it. I'm not a big musical person, but I found all the all the songs really enjoyable. Especially I think a standout for me is Kidnap the Santa Claus. I think that sequence is so funny and enjoyable. But I think I ultimately am going to vote for Klaus just because it, it really did blow me away so much. Like Keith said, the voice acting is incredible. I think the fact that it is like the classic telling of Santa Claus, but it still feels original, is uh, it's really impressive. And then also, um, 
it, it's really hard for new Christmas movies to kind of break through going uh, in this field of, of all these classics. Like, I think the only other like newer movie we have on here is Elf. And that's almost 18 years old at this point. And, and Klaus came out just last year and it, it, it already kind of feels like a Christmas classic. So I think ultimately I'm going to throw a vote for Klaus as well. Yeah, we talked about Nightmare last week, so I won't I won't go too much into it. But just my general thoughts are I really love the music. But just the story is is always been odd to me. Actually, seeing the behind the scenes made me go, oh, it kind of makes sense why things are jumbled because people couldn't really vibe and agree with each other. But the basic thing is I like the actual Christmas story in Nightmare Before Christmas. But then when they introduce Oogie Boogie and he's like only there for five minutes and he's only there to capture Santa and Sally. And then there's this whole other plot that starts. There's like, OK, I'll go save them so I can declare my love for Sally, even though she's been doing that the whole movie. And I just rebuffed her the whole time. And then and then it's just like, OK, Jack, you failed at saving Christmas. So now I'm going to go do it. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy Halloween. So it just feels so rushed to me at the end. I, I don't love the actual pacing of the story, even for such a short movie. Um, I, I still appreciate it, though. But yeah, I'm just kind of patting it here because I, I was just blown away by Klaus as well. I just kind of randomly watched it on a whim, just trying to you know get through my Netflix queue that had some old Christmas movies in it that I hadn't gotten to yet. I was just amazed that the animation was so beautiful. The voice acting, like you guys said, was amazing. Um, shout out to Norm MacDonald, who was in there. I feel like we don't see him too much. Um, and yeah, just the the story was so cool. I loved how when it starts, like if I had just told you guys to watch this movie and like with no context, you might not even know <laughs> like what it is, like a Santa Claus, some type of origin movie, because it just starts and it's from the perspective of this postman and kind of how his selfish act of getting all these letters so he can get money to go home turns into this really kind of beautiful thing that starts Legend of Santa Claus and, he, and all those like little fun elements of uh, the coal and the stockings and he sees you when you're sleeping, knows when you're awake. Like all this stuff is just like this folk tale that they create before our eyes. And by the end, I was like, wow. And it, I mean, to Austin's point, talk about one of my favorite character arcs, probably in any of these movies with um the man, man, I just thought it was awesome. And Kind of the little buddy relationship between he and Santa was so cool. So just want to say all that good stuff because if you haven't seen Klaus, like I'm sure some people have it. It's on Netflix. Go watch it. It's great. I'm voting for it. So unanimous call right there. All right. Congratulations to Klaus. You will go on to face Die Hard in the next round. Oh, boy. <laughs> what a fun <laughs> pairing. <laughs> all righty. Our next matchup today is How the Grinch Stole Christmas versus The Polar Express. Uh, the Grinch is directed by Ron Howard and stars Jim Carrey and Taylor Momsen as The Grinch and Cindy Lou Who. And then we also have The Polar Express, which is directed by Robert Zemeckis, and stars Tom Hanks doing a multitude of voices. Oh, man. This is a tough one. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start us off in this one. And uh, as you guys know, and I've said it a few times on the podcast now, I am not a big Christmas movie person or holiday movie person. Um, however, The Polar Express is the one that, for whatever reason, I do have the most nostalgia for. I may be letting my nostalgia overpower me here because I think The Grinch is the better movie, but I am going to vote for The Polar Express ultimately. Okay. I think it's such a fun story. I love the underlying theme. I love it so much. I think it's. I just think it's so magical, especially as a little kid when I used to watch this, just this train showing up on Christmas Eve that can take you to the North Pole, trying to recapture Christmas spirit. There's just something about this film that I love so much, so my vote will be The Polar Express. Okay, so this isn't as bad. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and be hyperbolic here, but we kinda in our Halloween bracket, our first matchup was Saw versus the Grudge. And I called that the shitty off. This isn't as bad, but this is the clo <laughs> this is as close as we're getting. None of these movies are good. I don't like these movies. Um, and I should because I love Jim Carrey. I saw this movie in theaters. I was so excited and I hated it as a kid. I saw Polar Express <laughs> in theaters. It was the only time I've ever seen it. I was nine years old. I was bored the entire time. I hated it. So rewatching them as an adult is weird because I like them more than I used to. With Polar Express, the weird stuff about it, I don't know. I I just think they might have missed the mark when adapting a 32-page short story. And they, it's weird. It's an hour and a half, but it somehow feels like there's still too much in it that's forced like these three kids becoming friends is almost laughable. Like this little mute kid at the end going, these are my friends. It's like they hate you and we, the audience, do too. Um, and it's just I don't like them. I don't get the message. And I, I understand how in a lot of these movies, it's like the whole seeing is believing thing is kind of, 
It's kind of weird when you break it down. Like, should that be the point? I feel like this one's the most egregious where he doesn't believe they have the whole thing from the book of the um the, the bell that you can only hear if you believe in Santa. But the first time he hears it, he's looking at Santa and he's like, he's like, <laughs> I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. And then shakes it and he hears it. And it's like, what a cool message. Um, It for sure gets a little outrageous towards the end. I, I will give it that. But I just I do think this is one of the funnest versions of the North Pole in any Christmas. No, movie. yeah, like, yeah. The way the elves are like the, the dancing and, and how like Christmas is like a big celebration, even at the North Pole, like all their hard yeah. work is paid off. I I think it's so fun. Yeah, no, I, I like that too. I, I didn't hate this movie but at all. I just, it's not my favorite on the list. And yeah, I just, the animation doesn't hold up for me too much. And I think the one part about it that specifically is is a little bit jarring is the faces and the models they went with there it looks a bit odd. Like as Keith and I were laughing yesterday, the teeth on these characters looks really, I don't know why it looks so weird, but it looks kind of goofy. So that's kind of off-putting when, you know, you're supposed to look at these characters so much. Anyway, the point is I didn't hate it, but I certainly didn't love it. I, I felt like I just, by the end, after these arcs, I was like, really? Like, they're all friends? Like, I don't know. Um, I do I do love the ending, though, the very end, just like I do in the book, which is he has this bell that he continues to hear as he grows old and all of his friends around him eventually fades away. Very cool. Um, the Grinch is weird. I don't know. This is not a kid's movie, this version of The Grinch. This is for, like, jaded young adults and, like, actual, like, old people, I feel like. Because Jim Carrey is just making sex jokes the whole time. It's kind of uncomfortable, (laughs) but he's great. He's so funny. It's not his best role by any means, I don't think, but he's so engaging to watch in it. He certainly makes the movie, though. Yeah, no question there. And it's also interesting comparing to the original because it's, it's certainly a different version of Whoville where everybody has almost like become corrupted by Christmas. All all they care about is the gifts and like what you can win awards with and shit like at the end of the year. It's kind of odd. It's a different version. But I do think it pays off better at the end whenever he does kind of accept Christmas spirit and he becomes good and kind of saves Christmas. And then everybody kind of making Cindy more of a character and she kind of warms the hearts of like, you know, Christmas shouldn't be just about the presents and how the Grinch kind of inadvertently by taking them makes it better, but then brings it back and he kind of reintegrates himself. So I don't love the movie. It's certainly not great. It's so drab looking, but I think Jim Carrey's performance and the arc by the end is going to push it over the edge over the Polar Express, which the like kind of comparatively the arc doesn't work for me really at all. And I don't love looking at the animation. So I'm going to go to the Grinch. All right, Keith, you have the swing boat here. Which are you voting for, the Polar Express or the Grinch? Uh, I think I'm going to go with Polar Express on this one. Whoa. I did not expect that. I thought Keith would be with Matt. Yeah, I'm surprised. Austin, I think you summed it up perfectly, you know, all the ways. I think I, I think the same way as far as Polar Express goes. I mean, a few things I'll add is I just thought the animation was really cool. Uh, all the train scenes were really fun. Um, all the characters that Tom Hanks played were were fun to watch. Matthew, I do agree with some of your points you did make. There were some things that I did not like about Polar Express, especially, yeah, the mute kid singing and becoming friends at the end. That was that was annoying and kind of cheesy. Uh, but I did grow up watching this movie every year until like a certain age and we kind of stopped watching it. So it is more of a kid's movie. But The Grinch, I think the only thing I really like about The Grinch is Jim Carrey itself, yeah. himself. I really don't like anything else about it. I think The Who's is, is not that great of a story. They're kind of creepy looking. Uh, it's more of a dark movie. Um, so yeah, I just think Polar Express fits the criteria for me a little bit more. I think I would only be annoyed if it was any other matchup. I mean, the Grinch, obviously, this version isn't great, so I I can't blame you. So, no worries. I get it. I get it. All right, well, the, the Polar Express will go on to face the Santa Claus in round two. Moving along here, we now have Jingle All the Way versus Scrooged. Jingle All the Way is directed by Brian Levant and stars Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sinbad. And then we have Scrooge, which is directed by Richard Donner and stars Bill Murray as Frank Cross. Ooh, all right. Two very good movies here. Well, <laughs> you're wrong about that, Keith. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's one very good movie here, and that is Scrooge. Jingle All the Way is a snooze fest. Oh, a snooze fest. Whoa. What? Yeah, Keith was the champion of Jingle All the Way. This was the first time I had seen it. And I kind of liked it. I, ha- I had a fun time with it. Um, but Keith, how about you tee us off? Because you're kind of the, the big Jingle fan that's kind of like has the most nostalgia for it. Oh, yeah. Jingle all the way. I still think it's hilarious. I don't 
I don't know. You guys didn't find the humor in it too funny? I didn't laugh once throughout <laughs> this movie. I found Austin. it so boring. I don't like either one of the characters. Neither one of them become better people as the movie goes on. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is still making promises he can't keep. Sinbad's a dick who should be in jail. I mean, he <laughs> blows up a bomb on a police officer. Yeah, so, that was yeah, weird. I, I'm definitely <laughs> voting for Scrooge. It was literally a bomb. Because <laughs> I was going to say, why is he getting arrested and Arnold Schwarzenegger isn't? They did the exact same thing. But then it's like, yeah. he did kind of blow up a building. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Weird. All right. Let me kind of go into my spiel here, and then I'll tell you my vote at the end. Um, yeah, Jingle All the Way, I think it's hilarious. I love all the Sinbad lines. I think he's mm-hmm. so funny in this movie. So even even old Arnie, uh, no pun intended, is – I think he's pretty funny in this too. Uh, we, have, we get little Annie back as Jamie. Hey, little Annie. That was a standout for me. Jamie. Jake Lloyd. Back for more. I'm happy to see that. Yeah. And Phil Hartman is funny. I like uh, Phil Hartman in this. Classic. Phil Hartman, yeah, is constantly hitting on Howard's wife, um, <laughs> yeah. re- played by Rita Wilson. And just all the uh, the mall scenes at Mall of America, everybody's like, it just shows the desperation of Christmas shopping and all that, yeah. and uh, which is so funny. And everybody's tackling each other and everything like that. But while I think that movie's super hilarious, I'm going to throw a vote to Scrooged. It just feels a little bit more Christmassy. It you know, shows the the true spirit of Christmas with Bill Murray's character and how it, you know, turns it from being a Scrooge into a believer in Christmas and all that. If Scrooge is going up against, uh, I think, any other movie, it, it probably wouldn't get my vote in this round. But just because it is going up against Jingle All the Way, my vote is going to stay with Scrooge as well. Um, I actually do find the last 30 minutes of this movie extremely enjoyable. It was hard for me to get on board for the first part of the movie. But whenever uh, Bill Murray becomes kind of like a changed man and, and he does a spiel on TV, that actually was way more heartwarming than I expected this movie to become. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's why I'm sticking with Scrooge. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously I'm going to go Scrooge as well. But I, I did enjoy Jingle All the Way. Like I said, I had a fun time with it. Never, never saw it. But. I I like simple premises, especially with holiday movies. It just kind of works. I just like the idea of this workaholic husband just, you know, with everything going on, forgot to get this toy that he promised he would get. And then the entire movie is just on Christmas Eve. He has to kind of do everything he can to make that promise come true and give his son the Christmas that he's hoping for. So I kind of found it sweet. (laughs) I like elements of it. I like that he gets to actually become the Turbo Man at the end and what that means to his kid and than his kid taking that. I hated that sequence. Really? I thought it was fun. I like the kid then taking the toy and giving it to Sinbad for his son because he kind of got what he wanted. All he, all he wanted was his dad to kind of show up. He didn't care about the toy. So I like stuff like that. I like the messaging, but it, it is it does get a bit muddled, but I, I had fun with it. Why does a parade prop have all these weapons and a usable jetpack? <laughs> usable jetpack. Jet yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's a, yeah, that's funny. Whenever Sinbad shows up this, as the villain, that's my favorite part. <laughs> he just shows up too. Um, so good. But yeah, I'm going to go Scrooge. I think this is, yeah, this is just one of my favorite Bill Murray movies in general. It's one of my favorite Christmas movies. And I really do think that it is my favorite interpretation that I've seen, and I've seen a lot of them, of A Christmas Carol, whether it be on stage, another movie, a book, or whatever. It's my favorite version, and that's kind of saying a lot because, I mean, think about all the like classic stories you can think of where they do like modern interpretations of them. And they're always kind of weird and cheesy, and the, the messaging is always weird, but I really thought it was kind of brilliant to make him this TV executive that's in charge making a version of Scrooge. And the thing I love particularly is going back to his past, seeing kind of things that are going on with people he knows in the present and the future. It's actually, you can actually track it much better than most of the adaptations. Like he basically was so low in the TV industry that he kind of traded love and traded things in order to rise up, even though he didn't realize that was what was happening. And then in the present, he's this jaded guy, probably because of the decisions he's made. And he gets to see that play out again. And like TV was his only solace as a kid and all that good stuff. And then you like actually by the end, it's not forced like in a lot of the adaptations. Like you see the people he knows in the present. He finally understands their true circumstances in life. And each time he comes back from these visits, he actually does try and be a better person, but ultimately fails. Like whenever he comes back from Ghost of Christmas Past, his first thing is, I got to go find Karen Allen and I have to kind of fix that, fix that mistake I made. But then when he gets there, he kind of 
his attitude still comes out and he ends up like rebuffing a homeless man and that pisses her off and he's like, oh shit. So he's not fully formed. And by the end, it's actually believable whenever he comes back from Ghost of Christmas Future and he hugs Bobcat Goldthwait. It's like, I'll give you a high ranking executive position. And then like Austin said, I, the, oh, the ending is, you're right. It's so much more heartwarming than it has any right to be. I also do love his, all his interactions with the various ghosts as oh, well. Yeah. I love the way they play off of each yeah, other. Yeah, they're great. And then... I mean, Bill Murray really is so great at this style of comedy, just dismissive, cold, but still somehow funny. And I think, like you said, at the end, he really does pull off just these great heartwarming moments whenever the the mute child finally is able to speak. And of course, says, God bless us, everyone, reminding him of the line. It's quite touching. And then I love uh, just the final song. So, yeah, I'm going Scrooged. I loved it. Another unanimous call. I do got to shout out one quote from this movie, though. Can you guys guess what I'm about to say? I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? It's a two-word quote. It's from Bill Murray, and it is, Bark, bark! (laughs) Nice. Never he was playing the dog. So we get another Rocky flashback. Buckets! Buckets! (laughs) God, what a treat. All righty. Well, Scrooge will go on to face Christmas Vacation in round two. And our final wild card matchup now is Home Alone versus A Christmas Story. Home Alone is directed by Chris Columbus. It stars Macaulay Culkin, Joe Pesci, and Daniel Stern as Kevin, Marv, and Harry. And then we also have A Christmas Story, which is directed by Bob Clark. It stars Peter Billingsley, Melinda Dillon, and Darren McGavin. Yeah, I guess I want to try and give it more credit. I don't know if I can. Um, I'm probably just going to end up going Home Alone here. I do have a lot of nostalgia for Home Alone. I certainly grew up with it and that franchise, and I genuinely think it holds up. I think Macaulay Culkin largely is the reason for that, and I love that he's just this little kid that wishes that his family, like after getting punished for something that he did wrong, he gets punished, has to go sleep in the attic, (laughs) wishes his family like he didn't have one, and then wakes up whenever they accidentally leave him, and now he's just, we get to see him kind of like, ah, my wish came true, adult life. And then going around at the Christmas time trying to make things work. And of course, you know, the whole plot has to kick in where Harry and Marv, the wet bandits, have to come and kind of uh, potentially ruin his time. And just, yeah, you know, dude, Macaulay Culkin is such a good actor. So good. And he really holds it. And by the end, whenever, like, we get the actual, like, uh, slapstick stuff. It's so fun to watch. It's so earned seeing these bandits get what they deserve. <laughs> Some of, sometimes it seems like they should have died by their injuries, but I guess we'll let that pass. <laughs> For sure, dude. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I think the movie's also anchored by Catherine O'Hara, who plays Kevin's mom, and just so desperately trying to get home and leads to so many great sweet moments with John Candy as well as they try and drive back to Chicago. And I think it's just this weird movie that works as just like a a family film, a Christmas movie, just a straight up comedy. And then like some great dramatic moments, especially with the old man across the street whenever they meet in the church and Kevin thinks he's a serial killer from all the rumors he's heard. But then it turns out he's just a sweet man that's alone on Christmas because of decisions that he's made that obviously tie into the whole family theme. And then Kevin kind of a encourages him to see his family again it's this beautiful ending so i love home alone Uh, i'm gonna go with it a christmas story is obviously a classic and i think it's a classic for a reason it came out at a time and it takes place further back in time so it kind of feels timeless in a way and i can appreciate that i love some of the vignettes i like how it's told through narration and some of these fun little side stories that happen and it is actually kind of cool how A lot of them tied together at the end, like just seemingly this random story of his dad getting chased by dogs when he comes home from work. And then, of course, at the end, they break in as uh, Ralphie leaves the door open whenever he uh, screws up his glasses from the BB gun he finally gets. So the dogs get in, they eat the turkey, and then the dad's just like, oh, let's go. And they go to the Chinese restaurant. So it's weird how some of them tie together. I appreciated that. That being said, I don't really enjoy watching A Christmas Story. Maybe it's because it was on just so much when I was a kid, and I feel like I've seen it just a million times in different bits and pieces that I've kind of lost interest in it. I don't find it particularly funny. I don't know if I'm supposed to at times. It's kind of weird. Um, I appreciate the look back at Christmas from that period of time. And Peter Billingsley, again, you know, to talk about Macaulay Culkin, as a kid, watching him hold his own in some of these scenes and just this really, like, I think solid performance as a kid is is pretty cool to see. Um, But yeah, I I just don't love, like, actively watching it. So I'm going to go Home Alone. Home Alone. 
is great. It certainly is a classic. I think as I've gotten older, I've found Macaulay Culkin as Kevin to be a little bit more grating. And as you guys know, I was dreading watching A Christmas Story because I am not a fan of these old movies. But I'm going to vote for A Christmas Story. And I can't believe I'm saying that. Whoa, whoa. But I had a great time watching A Christmas Story. Nice. I love that it, that it is kind of this period piece. Um, I've seen it before and I just, I guess I just didn't really remember it, but I love the way the narration is used. And I found Peter Billingsley hilarious in this movie. I think he's funnier than Macaulay Culkin. Um, I, there were scenes that were genuinely making me laugh out loud. I think it's so heartwarming. It's so sweet. And I also was watching this with my parents cause I'm, I'm home for the holidays now. And, uh, they're, they're older and they were pointing out that this movie does kind of capture what Christmas was like in that era. Mm-hmm. And my, my dad especially was telling me how much he gets out of this movie. And I think that made it also slightly a little bit more of an enjoyable experience as well. A Christmas story blew me away and, and I am going to vote for that. Nice. This is a tough one for me because I really love both these movies. Um, yeah, Home Alone's awesome. It, I think it does capture the Christmas spirit in a way, you know, you know, be careful with what you wish for, I think is the underlying theme of the movie. Man, one thing I want to mention about Home Alone that cracks me up every time is his brother Buzz. Oh, yeah. I love his brother Buzz. <laughs> uh, he, when he goes into one line, I want to say, one line, he goes into his room and he's like, hey, Buzz, can can I sleep with you tonight? Because Fuller always wets the bed. <laughs> and Buzz goes, I wouldn't let you sleep with me if you were growing on my ass. <laughs> 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 he just walks away. So good. And like, you're right, Austin. I don't know how they didn't die from falling off the stairs <laughs> and getting... Pretty much getting like Macaulay, Macaulay Culkin's character should be like a serial killer yeah, in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then if you go to the second one, he's even more of a serial killer. He's throwing bricks. He off throws buildings. multiple bricks at their heads. <laughs> and then <laughs> Daniel Stern as Mar falls down a hole, and he has Keith and I our favorite line of all time. He falls down this huge hole and just looks up and goes, "Wow, what a hole!" <laughs> <laughs> They also get electrocuted to the bone, I'm pretty <laughs> they do, sure. They do. Yeah, they do. Uh, all right, Keith. So what are your thoughts on Christmas Story as well? Christmas Story, I'm I'm with you, Austin, on that one. Uh, it's classic. It really captures the meaning of Christmas. It takes place in 1940, which is a time we really don't see anymore in movies. And obviously, we didn't grow up during that time. So it's cool to see what it was like during those days and uh, how kids really didn't need much to be entertained. They just want He just wanted his Red Rider bb gun yeah and it was kind of cool uh all the different things he had to do as far as like trying to sell it to his mom we also got a shout out that scene at the mall when he goes to see santa claus oh that's hilarious so yeah <laughs> so good. the whole They're chucking ho, the kids ho. down the slide <laughs> yeah and just yeah just pushes the kids down the slide uh it's funny but yeah i think i might have to go with christmas story too i was thinking i was gonna wow. go with home alone nice. but i think christmas story fits the criteria a little bit more than Home Alone. Keith and I, uh, other than Jingle All the Way, we're in lockstep today. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. it looks like it so far. Yeah, I did like I did like Christmas Story the most on this viewing. I just, I don't know why I don't like, whenever I'm actually watching it, I'm a little bit, I guess, bored. But I do appreciate it. Like I said, my favorite part about it really is how it doesn't seem like a movie where everything's going to be tied together at the end with all these random stories they're telling. And it's pretty cool that it actually does like i wasn't expecting that and honestly it's probably good that his dad got him that gun because ralphie was probably drafted in a few years for world war ii so he probably needed some practice (laughs) (laughs) i i also think a christmas story is is just better made than home alone too the the fact that it has kind of stood this test of time is is really a tribute to the filmmaking yeah i mean it's probably the movie that plays the most on tv oh yeah i mean it's it's the one that has the 24-hour marathons they just play it all day that's probably on TBS right now, literally playing 24 hours. I mean, it's a movie that means a lot to a lot of people and of different ages, which is cool. And the fact that it was made in the 80s still surprises me. It seems like a movie that was made like when it came out, like in the 50s or 40s or something. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. weird. But yeah, so I, I can't bl- I'm su- I am surprised mostly at Keith. I really thought Keith was going to go home alone, but I thought I was too, to be honest. But I thought you'd be surprised with me. I guess I I guess I am, but I guess I'm more new that Keith loved Home Alone. So I guess I thought he was going to go with that. So, I mean, I don't know. Because I, I, watch, I watch Home Alone every year and still will. But uh, yeah, I think Christmas Story fits the criteria more if we're, okay. if we're going off that. So. Yeah. All righty. Well, A Christmas Story will go on to face Elf in round two. And it is now time for round two. Let's get into it. Our first matchup is Die Hard versus Klaus. I'll, I'll start by saying I love Die Hard as a movie. Classic Bruce Willis, 
classic Alan Rickman as Hans Gruber. Probably one of the best action movies ever made, oh, in yeah. my opinion. No doubt. You know, it came out in yeah 1988. Yeah, pretty cool. It does take place during Christmas in Los Angeles, and you do kind of get the Christmas vibe at the end, but not so much. And kind of at the beginning, too, at the party, but not so much in the middle. The middle is all just action, and and it's great action. And you get some great lines from Bruce Willis and um, Alan Rickman. You really only get the Christmas feel of it at the beginning and then the very end when they're getting in the limousine and driving away. So I, this does definitely does not fit the uh, Christmas criteria for me. And then Klaus, like I said, for all the reasons before, Klaus is just an awesome Christmas story. Um, pretty cool that it just came out. You think it would be, you know, would have been made uh, a lot earlier. So I'm going to go with Klaus. But Keith, what about that great Christmas moment whenever Hans Gruber goes, No, I have a machine gun. Ho, ho. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the party, pal. To the party, pal. Yeah, I, this was the other one I was talking about at the beginning when I was talking about Nightmare Before Christmas, and there was one other one that, you know, probably doesn't fit the criteria super well, uh, but I also can't fault it, and obviously it's a Die Hard. I agree with Keith. If we're if we're doing action movie bracket, I don't know if I think Die Hard might go all the way for me. It might be my favorite action movie of all time. It's just so perfectly made and paced. And how the characters are used and how they're so innocent, even John McClane, and then how just this street cop has to kind of take charge. And it's not like the later movies where he's doing all these crazy stuff. It's like, honestly, he's just surviving. It's believable. And how they use um, all aspects of like the skyscraper as a oh, playground. Yeah. I think it's so cool yeah. about this movie. Just all the set pieces are awesome. It's so perfect. Mm-hmm. It's so perfect. But one of the few brackets, it probably won't win is a Christmas movie. Again, I'm totally fine with it being on this list because of the stuff that Keith did mention. But if it's, 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 you know, it's just the nature of the bracket. Like what's it going up against? If it's going up against something like Nightmare Nightmare Before Christmas, I might actually go Die Hard. But here, I got to go Klaus. You know, it's all Christmas. It's the, it's this new origin of Santa. It's such this cool perspective again through the mailman's eyes and how his entire life he goes from the selfish kid to the selfless person and chooses to live here with the people that he has touched and loves and all that good stuff. So, yeah, I got to go Klaus. It's all Christmas and it's beautifully done and beautifully animated. We didn't talk about that. This movie looks fantastic. So, yeah, I'm going to go Klaus as well. Klaus is certainly the more Christmassy movie. However, for me... I think a lot of people might feel this way about A Christmas Story. It doesn't feel like the Christmas season for me until I see Die Hard's on TV. That's the only yeah. thing I'll throw kind of in, in Die Hard's ring for uh, for being a Christmas movie. But yeah, man, Klaus is, Klaus is just so great. And, and everything you guys have said about it, I would echo. So I'll just say I'm going to vote for Klaus as well. Die Hard's great, obviously. Can't fault it. All right. So Klaus will move on to the semifinals. And now we have the Santa Claus Going up against the Polar Express. Okay. All right. Polar Express is back um, against one of my all-time faves, the Santa Claus. So I guess I'll start. (laughs) I I mean, I I was, yeah, I was the one dissenting vote for Polar Express and picked the Grinch. Yeah, personally, this is an even easier, easier decision. There's, There's no doubt in my mind that the Santa Claus Not only is the better movie, but is the better Christmas movie. I think this movie is so perfectly paced. I love that it starts on Christmas Eve, basically. And he's like, he's just the typical dad that we kind of see in these movies where it's like, yeah, Santa, great, good stuff. You go to bed, you know, presents are coming. And then they just like just they're so fish out of water with the whole Santa Claus, the current Santa falling. And then they just kind of end up in the sleigh to check it out because Tim Allen's trying to like, don't go in there, get out of there. And they end up basically being forced to go through the motion that Santa would. They end up back at the North Pole. And and then, of course, Keith Bernard, played by the incomparable David Krumholtz, is like, all right, you're Santa. Here's the Santa Claus. You got to do this now. So you got 11 months, get your affairs in order and you'll be back. And then the entire rest of the movie is just that 11 months, basically, and his body's changing. He can't help it. And, like, now um, uh, Charlie's mom and his step his stepdad, played by Judge Reinhold, of course, as as Neil and all of his beautiful sweaters, um, they they, I just love this element of the story that everybody forgets is that they are convinced that uh, Tim Allen, Scott Calvin, is so (laughs) trying to keep Charlie, like, in his good graces that he is changing his body, his hair, (laughs) to look like (laughs) Santa Claus, to basically 
like let Charlie have this delusion that Santa's real because they don't believe anymore because they didn't get the thing that they wanted so bad. They didn't get their Red Rider BB gun when they were a kid, essentially. And then at the end, it's kind of full circle. Now he's back. Now he's going through the Christmas motion like at the beginning, but now he's accepted the Santa Claus stuff. All I just love it. I love the performances. I love that final moment at the end where he gives Neil and his ex-wife the gift they always wanted, and now they believe, and now he and Charlie's relationship is fixed. He can continue to see him. I think it's just so perfect. I love it. I love how he accepts Christmas. And like I mentioned earlier with Polar Express, I think my least favorite part about it is I think kind of the whole arc and the believe aspect, whilst a bit similar to Santa Claus when it comes to seeing his believing, I feel like they kind of botch it at the end of Polar Express. And then like I mentioned already, I don't love the animation. And I think some of the Stuff they added in to pad out the story based on the very short book, of course, is just weird. Like the skiing scene and then like all these other, like the caribou, these weird characters and all that stuff I don't love. So this is a pretty easy call, Santa Claus for me. I'm going to vote the Polar Express over the Santa Claus. <laughs> Here's what I'll say about the Santa Claus. I, I love the first Christmas Eve night and the second time that Christmas rolls around. Everything else in between I think is kind of boring and, and not that funny. Um, the sequence at the North Pole and Bernard and the way Tim Allen and, and Bernard interact is, is one of my favorites. I, I think it's so great. But I also think this movie doesn't hold up that well. There's so many scenes in this movie where it's so clear it's just a set. And I know you. I know you don't think the animation in the Polar Express looks that great, Matt. But uh, to me, I think it actually holds up better than the Santa Claus does. Um, and I also think the Polar Express is just more of a fun movie. Um, like I said, it, I think it's so magical. Just the idea of this train coming and taking you to the North Pole on Christmas Eve night. Um, for me, the Polar Express just feels more like um, what I want from a Christmas movie. So ultimately, I'll be voting for the Polar Express. Wouldn't the magic of the Polar Express be diminished a little bit whenever you finally get on this train and then this 50-year-old man doing the voice of a three-year-old kid is like, hi, hi, did you know that this train goes 72 miles per hour? And he's like, hey. <laughs> and they're like, what are you doing here, know-it-all kid? And he's like, I'm doing the same as you. I'm making sure I'm getting all the stuff I wanted for Christmas. Okay, bye. See you later. We're friends. <laughs> Well, the, the magic of Christmas certainly gets diminished for me in the Santa Claus when Tim Allen looks at a 12-year-old girl and goes, hey, you're looking good. For her age, she's 500 plus. <laughs> Fair point. All right, Keith, once again, you are tasked with the tiebreaker vote. Oh, man. Um, I'll be honest. Whenever we went in to rewatch these movies, I was way more excited to watch the Santa Claus than I was Polar Express. Um, I love Tim Allen in it. Big Tim Allen fan from Home Improvement and Buzz Lightyear and all the other great roles he's been in. Um, I mean, this is one of his best roles of all time, too. Kind of a different take on Santa Claus, like, and how someone becomes Santa Claus, you know. I like that they do the play on the name. I think that's really creative for the story creation. The Scott Calvin, uh, yeah, same initials and everything. Well, and just Santa Claus with, with Claus actually being a Claus. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, definitely. Um... And then the overall North Pole stuff, I thought it's like, that's, I feel like whenever I was a kid and I imagined the North Pole, that's what it looked like. And that's what it reminded me of. So I think they captured it pretty well. And I did, I, like you said, also about Polar Express, I did like that taking on North Pole as well, as it was like a mini city. And all the elves were like super hard workers and all that. I did like that different take on it as well. I also don't, I don't really like the idea of just that anybody can become Santa Claus. Like for me, I, I don't really like that take on Santa Claus either. Yeah, but at the same time, I like that even though it's almost like he was forced to do it, he genuinely does accept it at the end because of his son's love for the holiday and just Santa in general. And then whenever he gets the snow globe, he does genuinely embrace it. And then at the, for the final Christmas stuff, he does. So I do I, – I get that point. It's like anybody can, but at the very least, I feel like they did earn him kind of actually accepting it. But that's a fair point. I'm going to throw a vote to Santa Claus. It just takes the edge a little bit more for me. All right. Well, the Santa Claus will go on to face Klaus in the semifinals. And now we have Christmas Vacation going up against Scrooge. Ooh, okay. Interesting pairing. Was was this, um Austin, was this your first time watching Christmas Vacation as well? My first time watching it all the way through. And how was it? I, I think the only thing I had seen for this movie was the sequence of him trying to get the house lit up. Oh, yeah. Um, And I got, I got to say, I actually did laugh quite a bit in this movie. I, I think it was really fun. Um, however, I think ultimately I am going to throw a vote for Scrooge just because I think Scrooge is a better, well-made movie. And like I said, I love the tw the last 20 minutes of Scrooge. I think it's so heartwarming. I don't think Clark Griswold has really that much of a character arc 
in Christmas Vacation. I think he still is kind of the same shitty guy that he was when the movie started. And he doesn't really capture that much of the Christmas spirit. The only time that he actually gets into a, a good mood is when he earns his holiday bonus. <laughs> yeah. um, so for me, being a, being a Christmas movie and really wanting to capture that spirit of the holidays, I'm going to throw a vote for Scrooge because Bill Murray's character does actually change by the end of the movie. Uh, I'm going to go with Christmas Vacation on this one. I just found this movie to be really relatable and, and and super realistic in a way. Not so much with the thousands of lights in the house thing, but just the whole overall family uh, structure yeah, of it. Yeah, and that is a great part of this movie. Yeah, I love the, all the chaos that that family brings, and that's so relatable in real life. I mean, you know, with growing up with my crazy family coming over and visiting us and causing drama. And, you know, Christmas is a magical time, but it also can be a very stressful time for people. And Jingle, like Jingle All the Way captured, too, with the whole... Uh, present buying thing and all that. So this movie really captures that, and I just think it's hilarious. Chevy Chase has, has so many funny moments and and quirks, and all this bad shit happens to him, like getting stuck in the attic and the lights not working. And uh, yeah, I just found the the character is really relatable, and it's, and Randy Quaid's character was super funny too. Mm. Just that crazy uncle. I think his son and his wife are funnier than Chevy Chase's in this movie. Shout out to Leonard from Big Bang Theory. That was him. For I mean, for me, they they are where all the the funny moments come from in this his, movie. Yeah, his wife really is funny. Yeah, I like Christmas Vacation this time around. I actually, I guess, I kind of disagree a little bit with Austin, but also ultimately agree that he doesn't really have an arc. But I disagree that he was shitty. He, it's weird. He's kind of an ass. But it is weird whenever, I guess knowing it's Chevy Chase playing him, he is like genuinely like presumably a, a good parent. And he, he does love, he genuinely loves the holiday season. It means a lot to him. And he's just kind of, kind of like pressured whenever all of his family shows up. But there is no arc. He seems like a good dad, but he is kind of a dick to his wife. That's true. That's true. I think that's probably Chevy Chase just improvising because <laughs> he's an <laughs> asshole. But, but I will I will say that Chevy Chase does do slapstick comedy very oh, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's probably, yeah, he's yeah. probably the best at it, I'd say. Yeah. But I, I, I like it. I like it. I would, like Keith said, it's just kind of this average family basically just trying to make the holidays work when all their families show up more than they thought would. And just trying to get through and not get mad at anybody because in the spirit of just family and the holidays. So I like that aspect. And I like how all of these sweet moments like him, like getting locked in the attic, but then rediscovering his some childhood videos of Christmas. And he's just sitting there crying and reliving it. And then he just falls through the attic. I, I like how they interrupt <laughs> it with slapstick every like time to time. And I also love Julia Louis-Dreyfus living across the street. <laughs> and how like we oh, get to yeah, that's hilarious. We cut back to that family. Chevy Chase should like kind of be in jail for all the destruction yeah, he causes to our it's house. It's weird that nothing ever happens to them but um <laughs> i like it i like how it's this weird kind of sweet movie with like this genuine like homely plot just trying to get through the holidays um without getting mad at anybody or blowing up but then at the same time just all this stuff keeps going wrong and i like that aspect and i do agree at the end it, it is a bit weird i like the cousin eddie like just taking his thing literally and kidnapping his boss i like that and i like him ending up like can he convinces like everybody should get a bonus, and I like that aspect. But it, it, I agree, it is a bit of that's the weird ending point, like getting your bonus. Like not saying you shouldn't, but it is a bit odd. Um, it still works, but yeah, ultimately I'm gonna go Scrooged. I just like I said, I think it's my favorite adaptation of A Christmas Carol. I love the modern sensibilities. I love Bill Murray in it. I love how he interacts with the ghosts. I love finding out his whole origin story and how that tracks through the present and where it can go in the future. And then how it all ties up at the end with him, like genuinely a changed person. And he's getting to experience the love lost and everyone seems like around him will live better because of his change, which is kind of the point. And he's going to have a better life because of it. And I love that aspect. I love it takes place at Christmas. All that good stuff. Got to go Scrooge. Well, Scrooge is going to move on to semifinals. And now our last matchup of round two is Elf versus A Christmas Story. Okay, the other one that we talked about last week, obviously, with holiday movies that made us as well, like Nightmare Before Christmas, Elf. So we got lots of background with Kale Boyder, who fucking loved Will Ferrell. Um, so <laughs> lots of good stuff. And I also love Will Ferrell. So I guess I'll just throw this out there. I'm not going to... I mean, it'll be pretty clear what I'm going with, but I want to see, based on you guys both picking Christmas Story, what will happen here. Elf... We got lots of movies on here that I love. But as you guys know, because we talk every Christmas Eve, what do I do right before we all hang out Christmas Eve? I have to watch A Christmas Elf Story. With the fam. Oh. 
Oh, no. <laughs> I have to sit down and watch Elf with the Fam. Like I said last week, we have lots of movies on in the background during the holiday season, but the only one that we actually all sit down, aren't doing stuff or cooking in the background is we watch Elf and we still love it. We still laugh out loud. We still love the heartwarming moments. We still love Buddy the Elf's journey. I Like I said, you know, we talked last week. They made a, a timeless classic that came out in 2003, which is kind of weird to think about. And I, I just love how it's almost like the inverse of <laughs> Scrooge, where Frank Cross kind of makes everybody's lives worse. And then he changes at the end, whereas Buddy just everybody around Buddy is Frank Cross. And then he kind of just through his upbringing, the person that he is at his core kind of integrates into their lives and his family. And he just wants to love them and be loved in return at Christmas. And everybody's lives get better because they know him. And it's like at the end, it doesn't feel forced. It's like he actually made an impact on so many people by doing just seemingly little things. And I love it. I think it's funny. I think it's sweet. I love the romance. I love Will Ferrell. So I got to go Elf. It's my favorite Christmas movie of all time. And I'm curious. I don't know how much you guys love Elf. So I'm curious if your newfound love for a Christmas story, or in Keith's case, your kind of your reignited love might outweigh Elf. I'm curious to see how this goes. This is a tough one for me because I really love Elf, but I still think I'm going to lean more towards the Christmas story just because it just has that nostalgic feel to it. It still captures the the spirit of Christmas just slightly better than Elf does for me. But I hate to say it because, yeah, I mean, I like, I really love Will Ferrell and Elf. I think it's hilarious. I, I really like James Caan and Zoe Deschanel as well. Uh, all good characters. Really funny stuff. Oh, Bob Newhart, too. I thought his character was hilarious. Bob L. But, yeah, I'm going to go with Christmas Story just because I think it captures the Christmas morning, um, the whole trying to get the present you want, um, and then just the cr- overall craziness of in stressful times at Christmas. I think it captures it a little bit better. So I'm going to go with Christmas Story. All right. So it looks like I've got the swing vote here. Like I talked about with the Polar Express, I, I, I had a lot of nostalgia for that movie. And, and as for someone who's not kind of a big holiday person, that's that's kind of like my go-to nostalgic movie for the holidays. Elf is my go-to movie, not every year, but but when I'm in a in a Christmassy move, that's my that's my movie. And I've, I kind of talked about this last week, but Elf is a movie that every time I watch it, I, ex- I expect for it to not hold up. And then it holds up even better than I remembered. And I'm laughing from start to finish. It puts you in a good mood when you watch it. Um, whereas with The Christmas Story, it's, it's a movie I actively avoided for like 10 years. And, and then when I came back to it, I, I found it funnier than I expected to. But Elf just holds up every time, man. And, and I could see The Christmas, a Christmas Story getting old for me again. So I'm going to vote for Elf. Okay, so Elf will go on to face Scrooge in the semifinals. And let's get into the semifinals now. We have Klaus versus the Santa Claus. I'll go ahead and start us off here. I'll be voting for Klaus. Uh, my argument that I made against the Santa Claus, I think, still stands true uh, in this matchup today. I think Klaus is just so exceptionally well made. It's so feel good. It, it blew me away. Um, the the twist on the like kind of folky tale of of the Santa Claus is, is just so original, while at the same time feeling familiar and and just. Man, it's, I can't say enough good things about it. So, yeah, it's got to be Klaus. Yeah, I think I agree with Austin. Obviously, him and I did not agree all the way on Santa Claus. I like Santa Claus a lot more than he did. But Klaus was just awesome. Um, pretty much echo whatever you said, Austin. Don't need to really add too much more to that. Great voice acting, awesome story. And I think it's going to be it's gonna be one of those new classics that maybe our kids can watch one day. So and I'm looking forward to watching it again next year for sure. So I'm going to go with Klaus. I certainly have more nostalgia and strong feelings, I guess, for the Santa Claus. And I genuinely, I watch it every year. I watch all three of them every year, actually. Uh, Two and three, not so good. But I still have fun with them. I think, um, I just genuinely think it's such a great film, the Santa Claus. I think Tim Allen's great in it. I love how he embraces it at the end and actually has to become Santa and what that means. And like we already talked about, I just think it's fantastic. But, and while I didn't expect it, I think Klaus might be, I obviously don't have nostalgia for it, but I just thought it was such an amazing watch. Yeah. I think it's definitely the better movie. It's beautiful just in terms of how it looks. Like that animation is just, God, I want to know who animated it because I want to like 
see what they're working on. I want to see what other movies they do because I want to see more characters and worlds that look similar. The montage at the end, whenever they're all friends and you find out that like for the next 12 years, they uh, basically were kind of Santa and and they were like they were the Santa Claus together. They were the Santa Claus that went around giving Christmas to the world and how they expanded from just the small town to everywhere. And then whenever Klaus basically, I I assume, passes on, it's like, where the hell is this going to go? And then you find out that he essentially kind of became the legend of the Santa Claus. And every year he's still able to give Christmas to the world and he gets to see his best friend, the mailman, once a year on Christmas night as he sits there with his milk and cookies so out great. waiting for him. And it, it's so perfect, man. It's just such an amazing payoff. And yeah, it's the better movie. Like I said, I have so much nostalgia for the Santa Claus, but I can't deny that this was just such an amazing film. So I will go Klaus as well. Wild card Klaus is in the finals, but we got one more semifinal to go, and it is now time for Scrooged versus Elf. This was the pair up I was most dreading. Ooh. I think I know what I'm going to do, but it's still it's still interesting. This will be hard for me and Matt because these are both movies that we have voted for at least at least once. I guess then, yeah. We, I guess, Keith, how about you start us then? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to go with Elf on this one. While Scrooge was funny, and for all the reasons I mentioned earlier, I liked it um, a lot, but I'm going to go with Elf. I think it was just more entertaining, uh, a little bit more comedy in it. It has to do with Christmas slightly more um, to me. And we get some good North Pole stuff with the elves. And then we also get some good family stuff with James Caan and the rest of the gang and Zoe J. Chanel. So yeah, I'm going to go with Elf. Keith, I'm curious. Would you have gone A Christmas Story if it was A Christmas Story versus Scrooge? Yeah, A Christmas Story versus Scrooge. Yeah, I would have gone A Christmas Story. Okay. Okay. So you just don't like Scrooge? I do like it. I just don't. It's just not up there. For me, as far as the holidays movies goes. Austin, what about you? Are you feeling strongly? Yeah, I'm feeling pretty strongly. I do mean everything I've said about Scrooge. However, I think what I've what I've kind of been learning about myself recently is I'm ultimately not a big fan of the Bill Murray bored with everything style of comedy. And he does kind of play that same sort of role in this movie as well. And, and while I do think the last 20 minutes of Scrooge are great and heartwarming and, and everything we've said, ultimately, I think Elf is just an enjoyable watch from beginning to end. It's so funny. It's it's so holiday spirity. It's It's just all the good things you can say about a Christmas classic. That's what Elf is. So I think Elf needs to move on to the finals. I'm definitely the highest on Scrooge, it sounds like, out of the three of us. I love it. Like I said already, I think it's the best Christmas Carol adaptation that I've seen. I think it's just truly fantastic and so earns its character arc. And I, I do, I, it's not my favorite version of Bill Murray, like Austin said, but I do still think he ends up turning out a great performance here. But yeah, I, I can't deny it. I think I got to go Elf. You know, while it's not similar to a lot of the stuff on this list, which kind of focuses maybe on, which nothing wrong with, you know, the present aspect of Christmas. I kind of like how this one is more about the payoff is that is the family aspect of Christmas, that Buddy finally finds and is accepted by the family that he wants to be. And as we see in the end, he is now, you know, an active part of that family. And he's kind of warmed the heart of his dad, Walter Hobbs. And um, and so I, I love it. Um, just that moment where Zoe Deschanel leads them in, in singing and then Buddy has to fix the sleigh and then they kind of fly over as the score kicks in and he just waves goodbye. And I, I love it. I just think... It's so sweet. And I, I do like that it focuses on the family aspect. Now that I'm saying that, I think maybe that's why my family has always responded so well to it, because it is kind of different in that sense. It doesn't focus necessarily on like – because our main character doesn't need to believe. It's not Polar Express where our main character is struggling to believe and everybody else already does. It's the opposite. Buddy is the one kind of anchor that does and his love for the holiday and people coming around to him as a person, it makes them believe. And Zoe Deschanel, who didn't, does and then leads them in song and then everybody else does. And it's this trickle effect that I think is so perfect. And the movie as a whole is just so sweet and fun and light and laugh out loud at moments. So yeah, I'm going to go Elf. It does hurt because like I said, I love Scrooge, but Elf is so great. So I'll get over it. I'll get over it. (laughs) Okay. And now it is time for the finals. We're almost done deciding the best holiday movie. We have kind of a newcomer outsider film in Klaus going up against a Christmas classic being Elf. This is a matchup I was dreading. I kind of knew it was coming. But here it is. Klaus versus Elf. Keith, start us off. 
Oh man, this is a tough one. Yeah, this is hard. I, I really don't know. Um, I don't know. Are you guys leaning at all? <laughs> I don't know or? either. I don't this know. This is hard, man. Uh, this might hard. be one of the toughest ones I've had. I'm actually up in a draw here. I don't know. I'm trying to leave my elf nostalgia at the door. I'm just trying to think what is yeah. the better movie? What resembles Christmas? Here's here's what here's what I'll say. I think Keith brought up an interesting point when he was talking about Klaus. He said, This is a movie I think we can all show our kids and it can become a classic for them. And I feel the same way about Elf. Yeah. Elf is obviously gonna be timeless. Yeah. That's the way it was made. But Klaus was so surprising to me. Yeah, that's why it's tough, because it's like so new. We put it in at the last minute and we were all genuinely surprised by it. So it's got, it has that edge, which is hard to argue as well, that kind of surprise element. And Klaus also has some truly funny moments as well. Oh, yeah. I think mm-hmm. Klaus might be like you talked about, Matt, with that ending sequence, I think Klaus might be slightly more heartwarming than Elf. So I think I'll go with Klaus. Okay. It doesn't get more holiday than than uh, the creation of Santa Claus, you know? That's another thing I think that is going into Klaus's favor. Yeah, the only thing I would argue is, obviously, for a lot of the movie, it's not that until it is, if that makes sense. Like, it takes a while to, for him to get to Klaus, which isn't a bad thing. I, I like that about it. And the payoff is so good. And like I said, I think Klaus is more complex because of like the perspective it takes and the arc actually takes time. Um, again, it's like I talked last round. It's kind of the inverse where Elf, it's not about Buddy's arc. Like he's always been a great person. He can be who he wants to be. It's all of like the mini arcs of the people around him with the main one primarily being Walter, played by James Caan. Um, and them, them hugging in Central Park is the payoff. So, but, you know, yeah. <sighs> I think that might be the other thing that swayed me to Klaus is, is Walter is just not a very enjoyable character to root for yeah and you do find yourself kind of rooting for this town and and these kids and and the teacher and the mailman and just it's just such a beautiful story it is crazy how just this like literal this selfish act and the whole whole movie in clouds they talk about how one selfless act begets another but in in this case what really happened is one selfish act him kind of conning the town into giving him letters we see it literally that rebuilds the entire town these kids want to now yeah. learn how to write so they can write letters. So they go back to school and the school is rebuilt. And then it kind of convinces the teacher to stay in town. So it's like everything changes because of this selfish act. And it's weird. It's like this mirroring effect because then the postman sees what his selfish act cause caused. And that starts to then warm his heart in return and his friendship with Klaus. And then he we get to see him basically kind of make and create and then give his first present one true act of kindness always inspires another. Very true. J.K. Simmons taught me that. Um, <laughs> he also taught me you can uh, throw a drum at your student and get away with it. <laughs> yeah, he did. Same character, too. It's <laughs> weird they did that again in this movie. Um, <laughs> so, all right. So there we go. Austin is locked in, Klaus. I mean, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still trying to figure it out in my head. Keith, have you kind of come to any more of a decision while Austin was talking? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Klaus as well. Ooh, um, okay. I really, yeah, I mean, Love Elf, cl- it'll always be a classic. And like we just mentioned, I think both of these movies will both be, uh, you know, classic. We can, classics we can show our kids uh, later on. Um, but I think Klaus is just going to take it just a little bit more for me. I think, like you said, Austin has the Santa Claus or, or a different kind of Santa Claus origin story. Um, I like the underlying theme of it. That it takes like this selfish guy, um, and then takes him into this crazy far off land, and he has to change his ways. And then at the end, he chooses to stay there instead of going back to his, you know, luxurious lifestyle that he was living before. Mm-hmm. He also genuinely impacts like the course of a town. Like this whole town changes because of him. Yeah, he turns this dark town into like a super happy town at the end. I I love when all the says like you don't realize what you've done and takes him to the town square and and it's jolly there's there's lights they're singing it's it's so great oh yeah i think we i think we covered it enough i think klaus yeah i'm gonna go with klaus yeah i think nothing would make more sense to me like and i i want to vote for elf so bad i mean like i said it's my favorite christmas movie it's the one that means the most to me and my family in terms of how many years now, every year since it came out, we've been watching it, including in the theaters. So it's like, it's our Christmas Eve movie. I think it's so perfect, like we've already talked about. It is timeless. Um, Will Ferrell's so good in it. And it truly embodies that family aspect that 
I think we all appreciate as we get even as we have get older when it comes to Christmas. And I think that's so important and it really does nail it. I love seeing how he just genuinely impacts so many people just by these simple acts. Um, so perfect. I guess what I've come to realize after seeing Klaus very recently, like we talked about, is while Elf is my favorite Christmas movie, and maybe, who knows, maybe someday I'll find a better one, but I think while it is my favorite, I guess it's not, that doesn't mean it's the best, you know? I think Klaus is a better movie. It just feels kind of perfect in execution. It's better made. I think they just nailed everything they were going for. And while I think Elf did as well, I guess Klaus just impressed me more. I think it's a better movie. Um, like, whereas Elf is kind of trying to achieve this family comedy at Christmas, Klaus sets out to create this crazy new origin story of Santa Claus and show how people genuinely change along the way. And it just nailed it. So I think it's not my favorite Christmas movie. Elf still holds that title. But I think Klaus is better. So I am voting Klaus. Well, now we can officially declare that Klaus is the best holiday movie beating out 11 other films congratulations to clout genuinely this one was just put on the list like last week right it was the last like edition three days yeah. ago i think because i just randomly watched it um and i was like guys i think we might have to take out uh gremlins which was on our outsider bracket <laughs> and put klaus in there for this new take on santa and i'm surprised that you guys liked it as much as i did i thought you guys might dig it but i didn't i didn't know it would be this much so people gotta go watch it before we close out today you guys got any honorable mentions that almost made the bracket i do um yeah i would say it's a wonderful life Ugh, um fuck no you haven't seen it i've seen it's it. it's a good one you have yeah it's trash <laughs> oh i actually quite like it's a wonderful life i think it's a good one it's a wonderful life it's so boring <laughs> <laughs> oh. um austin i know you like you said you're not a big like holiday person, but was there anyone that you wanted to put on your list that didn't make it? The only other one I would say is Gremlins, which got swapped out for Klaus. Um, it, I guess you could kind of make an argument. It's more of a horror movie, but I still think you kind of get that, that little Christmassy vibe from oh, it. Yeah. And I think it's just a, a fun little story. And it's it's really, it's kind of adorable too for it trying to be scary. I think Gremlins is undeniably a Christmas movie as well. And I watched it for the first time because like Austin said, that was originally supposed to be on the bracket. And I loved it. I had a blast with it. Um, it's just it's that, fun, man. It's a fun movie. Yeah, definitely would recommend. All right. I'll try and go quick. As you guys know, I guess I am the holiday movie person. So I have some. These are not all good movies. Just so, just so that it's clear with everybody. But I firmly believe you got to watch these movies during the holidays. You might not love them, but you'll have a good time. The Holiday. Great one with Jack Black, Kate Winslet, Jude Law, Cameron Diaz. Classic. The Muppet Christmas Carol. Just Friends with Ryan Reynolds, Amy Smart. That's a fun one. Noel, another recent one on Disney Plus. That's the Anna Kendrick, Bill Hader one. I guess uh, this would be a good time to mention Austin. We have a movie that was almost put on this bracket that Austin and I both watched and were so horrified that we took it off, and that was Bad Santa. So that's one that oh, we will man. not recommend. <laughs> don't watch. Yeah, that don't one. don't watch Bad Santa, people. It has not aged well. And then I guess since we didn't talk about, I do like Home Alone two and three. I think those are fun movies. And then as my last one, well, I guess Love Actually is kind of fun as well. But the last one I will say. It is, I was talking about this with Keith and Austin yesterday. This is the best, worst Christmas movie, I think. It has a fantastic premise. It mostly botches it, but it's led by a lead performance that's so good. I, I always have to watch it. And that's Fred Claus, led by Vince Vaughn. Ooh, Such yeah. a fun watch. Not a good movie, but very fun. And I like watching it every year. So that is my list. I just thought of another one. What uh, you got? And it's a funny one. And it, it definitely wouldn't have made it far in the bracket, but... It is a very in Harold Kumar. Christmas. Oh, that's a good movie. Oh, that's we, that I think we might have one. saw that in theaters. That's, that's a, a good one. one. I like that movie. All right. Well, let's go ahead and start wrapping this up. Thanks for the honorable mentions, guys. And of course, we did just award Klaus with the best holiday movie of all time. But we do have some Arnie's Podcast Awards to give out. This is a segment where we give an award to anything in this episode. Keith has never known the rules for any episode of the show. Keith, start us off. All right. I'm bringing back an award for this one and it is the best candidate for weight watchers award goes to mr tim allen <laughs> oh my god <laughs> he and tried he tried <laughs> tim allen he tried to lose the weight but that santa claus just caught up to him you can't deny that all right i'm going to go with the catchiest slash most annoying song of all time and it's cindy lou who from how the grinch stole christmas going looking out her window where are you, Chris? 
Christmas. Why can't I find you? There you go. <laughs> you know that uh, that young actress is now the lead singer of a heavy metal band. Ooh, they should do a cover of that of the Christmas song then. Ooh, they should. That'd be good. I think she's trying to get away from that I, that brand. There is you know? a Grinch metal song actually. Y'all should go check it out. All right. It's pretty cool. There is also a heavy metal rendition of this is Ho- of this is Halloween, and it's awesome. Ooh, all right. I'll nice. check that out too. Want to check those out? All right, Austin, close us out. I will close us out today, and I'm giving the longest road trip award to the armored vehicle in Die Hard. It takes forever to get to the building. They're driving like 20 (laughs) miles down the road, and it was making me laugh while we were watching that movie. (laughs) So good. So good. Well, I wish Argyle would have gotten an award. I should have given Argyle an award. Great side character from Die Hard. (laughs) (laughs) All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening today. That's going to do it for us. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss any of our upcoming content. At The Arnies is our social, and thearnies.media is the website. Also, if you wouldn't mind sharing us with a friend, that really is the best way to help us continue to grow the show. We will be back on Tuesday for a review of Wonder Woman 84. Wow. What a treat. You know, that's our next episode, like Austin said. And the one after that is our last of the year. We have our award show where we will be giving out some serious and some fun, just silly awards to the movies and TV shows of 2020. So look forward to that as well. Also, of course, like we mentioned at the top, if you are a fan of The Mandalorian and missed our series review, go check that out as well, because each episode, as they came out for season two, we put out a little bonus episode where we kind of just gave our little review and breakdown of the episode. So you have eight episodes you can go listen to right now. So enjoy that. And like I mentioned as well, in a few weeks, WandaVision will be our return to that format, doing bonus reviews for each episode as they come out. And yeah, uh, go check us out on Instagram at The Arnie's. Feel free to direct message us your thoughts on this episode. Or uh, was the outcome uh, what you expected? Uh, Klaus came out on top. Please go watch that movie. It's awesome. Yeah. Send us your favorite holiday movies. Yeah, send us your favorite holiday movies. Like Matthew said, go watch Mandalorian and look forward to the awards coming up. Alrighty, everybody, that's going to do it for us today. We hope you have a great holiday season. We hope you get some time with your family, be it virtual or in person. And have a great week, everybody. We'll see you soon. Happy holidays. See you. Where are you, Happy Christmas? Christmas? Happy holidays. Happy holidays.